Here I'm going to discuss quantifying the discretization error, which brings up a very important idea, the order of accuracy of the discretization scheme. And to explain this, I will go to the, um, the channel mesh that we had and focus on these two cells, the cell one and cell two. And we had written the algebraic equation for mass conservation for that cell. And in, in that, we had to approximate the, um, the value at the green cross, at the, you know, the velocity, the u velocity at the center of the phase as an average of these two values. And that's the equation we had. So that's the value at the phase, and that's the value at the adjacent cell centers. And in the process, we introduced an error. And here, let's quantify that error. To do that, what I will do is write the value um, here of u here in terms of a Taylor series expansion about the value at the face. So u1 I can write as u12 and if this distance is delta x then that distance is delta x over 2. So I first I need the derivative. So I'll need the derivative du dx. That's the derivative in the x direction at the face at 1, 2 times this distance. That's minus delta x over 2. Because it's in the negative x direction. And then the, sec the next term in the Taylor series, which so you have the second derivative times minus delta x over 2 squared, and then you also have a half. So I have a half here from the Taylor series expansion plus higher order terms, so you'll get a delta x cubed term and so on, so I'm not going to write the higher order terms. Similarly, I can write an expansion of this um, value in terms of the, the value here. Let me write that out. Okay, so this expansion looks the same as that, except that instead of having minus delta x over 2, I have plus delta x over 2. And then if I add these two together, okay, so that'll give me 2u, u1, 2, uh, twice the value at the face, and that'll give me u1 plus u2. And let me just divide through by 2, and, you know, rearranging, I'll get uh, something that looks like that. So I'll get u12 is equal to u1 plus u2 over 2. That's nothing but that term here. Plus, now when I add these equations, um, these two terms will cancel. And so the leading, you know, the next term is over here. And I will get delta, um, the second derivative, and this half half will become 1, but then I have to divide through by 2, so I'll get a half here, delta plus dot dot dot.
And this is the error term. And it's proportional to delta x squared. So the error is proportional to delta x squared because that is the leading term. And as delta x becomes small, you know, this term in the error will dominate the other terms. And so you'd say this is a second order accurate approximation. because of that. In a first order, you know, the error will be proportional to delta x. The delta x will be, you know, will be in the leading term in the, in the error. And if every um, approximation in your scheme is second order accurate, then you would say you have a fully second order accurate discretization scheme. And what that implies is that as I, so let's say, you know, I use some value of delta x and I get an error. Let's say error is some value e. And if I use a new mesh that's half the old mesh, in a second order scheme, my error is going to go down by a factor of four, okay, because it's, it's second order accurate. So this is going to go down as delta x squared over two. Whereas for the first order accurate, the error would also go down only by a factor of two. So you can see the attractiveness of the second order scheme that the, the error would go down much faster as the square of the, the grid spacing. But the second order accuracy has a disadvantage in that it's the convert, the iterations are less prone to converge, that is, it's less stable um, compared to the first order. So the advantage of the first order is that it's more stable, that you can drive the linearization error below the tolerance um, more easily as you, as you go to more complex problems. And we will see, you know, this relative advantages and disadvantages of the first order and second order schemes when we get into the, the ANSYS Fluent Solver.